Hello, I'm Kathleen Warshawski. Welcome to Seniors Blue Book, SBB University Caregiving Resources. Today's topic is neuroplasticity and the impact of brain health and fitness on overall wellness. We've got some great speakers today um, and we're, I'm looking forward to this event. I'd like to thank our hosts for today's event, Seniors Blue Book, the Oxford Grand and Home Care Assistance. We have Laura Black on the call here. She is gonna tell us a little bit about Oxford Grand. Hello everybody, happy November, hope you're doing well. Uh, thank you so much, I'm thrilled and honored to be part of this program. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Oxford Grand is an assisted living and memory care community in the heart of McKinney. Uh, we actually won best memory care community in 2019. And uh, we've got two communities, the Glen and Carr House, that provide a warm and intimate environment uh, for our residents to thrive, not just survive, as they uh, deal with their cognitive impairment. Uh, and we also have our assisted living community as well, with just a fantastic care staff. And we do still have vacancies. So if you are working with anyone over the next several months who are getting a little bit concerned about being home or ready to transition to uh, a community where they can really get a lot more hands-on care, uh, please think of us. So thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Thank you, Laura. We also have Matt Princiato on the call and he is with Home Care Assistance. Matthew? Thanks, Kathleen. Hello, everyone. Um, this is Matt Princiato. I'm the owner of Home Care Assistance in Allen, Texas. Uh, we also have uh, Chad from the Dallas office here is gonna be presenting and Jennifer. We're all, uh, uh, certified dementia practitioners. So, you know, have some experience dealing with cognitive impairments. At Home Care Assistance, we primarily provide um, home care. So in-home care to older adults. A large part of our program is making sure that we have uh, brain health and brain fitness incorporated into all of our care plans. So we really put a lot of time into our care plans and um, make sure that it's a balanced, holistic approach, and that includes a lot of brain health activities, physical activities. Uh, so, you know, we, we really feel it's, it's an important part of the care plan um, and can really help our, our older adults that we help uh, thrive in their home, having these cognitive activities and, and brain health exercises. So happy to be a part, uh, a part of this, and thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate that. A few housekeeping things that I wanna take care of. Um, our topic today is neuroplasticity and the impact of brain health on overall wellness. The purpose of this educational activity is to increase the knowledge of the registered nurse and other healthcare professionals in the area of neuroplasticity and its impact on brain health. To receive your educational contact hours, the attendee must register via Zoom and attend the entire webinar presentation. Complete the evaluation tool within 24 hours of the event completion, and you'll receive one contact hour for nurses and social workers. Disclosures, there are no conflicts of interest to report. There was no commercial support received for this activity, and the event hosts did not influence any content today. And with that, I'll have Jennifer go ahead and pull up her um, presentation for her and Chad. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started with our topic. So again, it's SBB University Caregiving Resources, Neuroplasticity and the Impact of Brain Health and Fitness on Overall Wellness. Our speakers today are Jennifer DiLorenzo. She's a certified dementia practitioner. And Chad Flores. Chad is a certified dementia practitioner and a client care manager with um, home care assistance. Let's see if Jennifer's having some problems. Jennifer, are you doing okay there? Yes. Okay. And I will put the evaluation link in the chat during the program for those of you who don't find it at the end of the program. All right. <clears throat> Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Kathleen, Matt, Yes, Laura. I can hear you great. Okay, excellent. Um, so thank you again, Kathleen, and, and we're really excited to speak about this topic today. Um, this is something that I started to really get interested in through learning about cognitive therapy and how 
much we can truly impact not only our brain health, but our overall lifestyle and overall wellness um, by doing some of these things that we're going to talk about today um, to strengthen the brain and keep it as healthy and fit as possible. Um, and again, where that's going to overflow into many areas of your life. Um, so if anyone has questions, you know, please put them in the chat. We'll do the best to answer them. If for any reason there's something uh, we're not aware of, we will definitely get the information and can follow up. Um, but want to make sure everyone gets what they're uh, hoping from today's program. So normally what I do is we'll start with a little brain game. Um, nor, we're only going to do a minute today, um, but I want to see in one minute how many three to six letter words you can come up with from the letters you see on the screen here. So go ahead and type your words into the chat if you can. And Jennifer, if you could turn your video camera on, they can't oh. see you right now. Can you? It's not. There you go. You got it? Oh, there we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Can you see a How many do you have? Well, I haven't started yet. <laughs> so they're typing in the chat for you. We have words like far, safari. Safari, I have never gotten that one. Wow. I'm going to have to add that. Asia, fair, sir, air, airs, fair, Sierra. There's one that they may not get. <laughs> I think Nikki's um, saying some interesting things. She made up some words with letters that aren't in there. <laughs> yep, we've gotten that. <laughs> oh, she, she used the first uh, letter of each to do it. She came up with freedom, reprise, interesting, applause, screening, and affirm. Oh. Technical glitch, sorry guys. Okay, so time is up. Um, how many did, you just shared the total. Um, did anyone get more than 12? No, I don't see more than 12. No, um, so. Six. Oops, sorry. Some of the ones, um, sir, you know, you had sir, uh, Farsi was another one. Um, so in the interest of time, we won't go through all of them. Um, but so far, I've gotten 17 words, um, three or more letters from this. So it's just an example of a way that, um, you know, we can tap into some of the areas that maybe we're not using on a daily basis um, to really make us think. Um, and this is going to impact when we get into domains, um, that language um, domain. And um, we'll get started. So today we want to talk about neuroplasticity. You know, what is it? Um, is our brain really made of plastic or, um, you know, what does this mean? And why it's important um, to everyone, not just someone who maybe has dementia or Alzheimer's or, um, you know, a different type of cognitive impairment. Uh, some of the things that we can do and incorporate into our lifestyle um, to make these changes. We'll get into some of the different categories of um, different types of therapies and um, throughout if we as we have time we'll throw out some brain games and, and try and keep you guys on your toes. Any questions before we get started. 
no. Okay. So, you know, the brain, um, the brain is amazing. And the more I learn, the more mind blown I am. Um, now it is composed of about 86 billion neurons, um, very high number. Of course, we know it's the central control system of the body. Um, so this is going to control both our involuntary and our voluntary processes. So um, involuntary, respiratory rate, blood pressure, et cetera. Um, but indirectly, we can do things that are going to impact that, right? Like our activity that we get, the food we um, put into our bodies. And then those higher functions, the voluntary actions, like our thought processing, uh, memory formation, problem solving, uh, decision making, you know, the things we do in our everyday life. Um, I do want to point out that there's such a, the more research um, that is going on, there's such a connection between the heart and the brain. And every time your heart beats, 25% of the oxygen goes to your brain. So when we talk about not just the cognitive um, therapies that we can do, it's also important to keep in mind that things that we do physically um, to get our heart rate up and to get our heart stronger, it's also going to have an impact um, on the strength and the health of our brain. So what is neuroplasticity? Um, basically, neuroplasticity is a term that refers to the ability to change and adapt through life um, as a result of experiences or our, our environment. Um, I love this graphic here um, because this really kind of makes it simple to understand. Um, through either an injury or experience, um, a, a progressive brain disease, um, you'll see here, you know, this pink cell, for example, is going to sl slowly die. So now we have this disconnection between the green and the orange. So we're going to talk about two different ways that we can either strengthen this green connection or we can create new connections to still accomplish that same task, but we're just going to go about it in a different way. Um, so basically, neuroplasticity is how the brain compensates for damage uh, by connecting these new neurons. But in order to do so, they have to be stimulated. Um, and that's through engaging in activities, um, aerobic exercises, music therapies, and other things to reduce stress in our lives that we're going to get um, into in just a moment. The one thing that, you know, really interested me as I learned more about neuroplasticity was um, there is such a thing as negative neuroplasticity. Um, so, you know, you hear people talk about, you have to think positive, um, you know, it's all about your mindset. And there are studies that show um, someone with a diagnosed with depression or anxiety um, versus someone that does not have, you know, any of those issues. And they take a look at their brain over a period of three plus months. And that person with um, depression, the gray matter in their brain got larger um, and then vice versa. Um, so this concept of negative neuroplasticity um, is, is really important, I think, especially today, because so many of us are stressed, anxious, um, you know, depressed with the things that are going on in the world. And we tend to involuntarily um, have these, these negative thoughts. And it's truly important, you know, to change that mindset, uh, because it actually is going to have a, a, a direct um, impact on your cognitive function and also cognitive reserve, which we'll get into in just a moment as well. Anything you want to add? I think that a lot of this also zeroes in on the mind-body uh, problem that we learn about in philosophy and, and science. You know, the role of consciousness in all of this, you know, as you're talking about the negative neuroplasticity, how we actually anchor our awareness and the thinking patterns and the behavior patterns uh, really has a dramatic effect on our cognition and our overall physical well-being. So as we get further into neuroplasticity, it's almost like trying not to see this as just some rote definition, but actually a living dynamic, you know, that ties into this ability for us to use our awareness to in effect heal, you know, our mind or our body, et cetera. Um, so I think that's kind of what's really cool about all this is that we're starting to see that science sort of matches up with some of the sort of metaphysical, almost 
you know, just positive thinking kind of dynamics. Yep. So it's really cool. It I really is. It. And I can hear my mother, you know, years ago saying, you have to be positive. You have to think positive. Don't be negative. Um, and now she can actually, she's a nurse. Um, she actually has words to back up, you know, her, her um, advice. <laughs> so it's definitely something very exciting. Um, so as we had, I had mentioned, there's two types of brain plasticity um, and or neuroplasticity. Um, and this is going to be, you know, actual structural plasticity. So based on experiences or memories, things you do can actually, as we had shown in the previous slide, um, change that that neuron, that pathway um, and the actual structure. And then other ways we can actually um, change the functional plasticity uh, by moving functions from a damaged area to an undamaged area. Um, so it's kind of two different ways to break down uh, what we're going to do and then, you know, how, um, <laughs> how um, it's going to have an impact on our brain. So just kind of at a high level, kind of understand um, those two different um, structures. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. So kind of Chad covered quite a bit of this in his um, previous comments, but why is this important? Um, it has such a tremendous impact on everybody's life. Um, and specifically with regards to the presentation today, we're gonna talk about how, because uh, I wanna keep it general where everyone can really get something from it that they can potentially apply to their life, um, but it can help slow down the aging process by building up cognitive reserve. Um, it can help better have better outcomes after a head injury, a fall, a stroke. Um, there are tremendous studies and research that show, especially with a tra uh, traumatic brain injury, the people that um, had a stronger cognitive reserve and practiced um, a lot of these functions that we're going to talk about shortly had a much better outcome um, after, you know, recovering or, or going through rehab for you know, that fall or that stroke. Um, drug and alcohol abuse, it actually, you know, kills the brain cells. So how can we, um, you know, after a recovery, um, you know, it's not just a, a one-time thing, how we can continue to rebuild and strengthen that brain after years of, um, you know, the, that type of abuse. And then what's most important today is, you know, help with stress, anxiety, depression, because um, again, these things do have a direct impact on the health of our brain. And um, the more we can do to strengthen them and alleviate them, um, you know, the better off we're going to be in these above type of situations. Anything else you want to add? So um, these are two books that are very powerful. Um, highly encourage anyone that's interested in learning more um, to take a look at these. Uh, but what's interesting was a study um, here. How was, there was a study done on a London cab driver's brain. So I got to move this because I can't see it. Um, showed that you know, the part of the brain that holds the spatial representation um, was a lot larger than that of a bus, bus driver. Um, so why is this the case? Well, <laughs> by driving the same route every day, the bus driver is not exercising that part of the brain. Um, so it's just kind of, you know, routine over and over and over. However, you know, with the cab driver, um, you know, they need to constantly be knowing how to re-navigate, avoid traffic, um, get different places faster. Um, so they're constantly tapping into different parts of the brain that, you know, that um, bus driver unfortunately wouldn't necessarily utilize on their day-to-day -day route. So it was a pretty interesting study. Um, and then, there was a, there's a big, um, there's a ton of, of information and especially in this book on how it can be reduced, how it can reduce human suffering. And this is where we talk about the quality of life, um, the depression, healing our brain and how that can um, tremendously impact, um, again, our quality of life. So you've heard me reference cognitive reserve or what um, we call money in the bank. 
Um, and the, the reason that this is important and there's studies now that are backing this um, is, as I had mentioned earlier, you know, it can help uh, slow down the signs of aging um, or degenerative brain diseases. So, for example, in my family, um, we have a history of um, uh, Alzheimer's disease. So it goes back a couple generations. So this is something very important to me um, because unfortunately I can't change my genes, but I can do things such as, um, you know, cognitive in, uh, stimulation and, and some of these other uh, methodologies that we'll talk about today um, to help eliminate or um, lower my chances as much as possible. Um, also, if you are exposed to unexpected life events, stress, surgery, um, different things in our environment, um, this is going to help you function better for longer um, and give you uh, your brain resilience to, uh, to recover from those events or have the lower impact on your lifestyle. Um, anything you want to add there? No, I think I'm still sort of, I'm still very curious about the study about the cab driver. I mean, the metaphor of the, the streets and the traffic and neuronal connections in the brain and how if you just kept doing one thing, it's almost like you're dancing around a damaged area, you know, and sort of what we're getting into is to sort of strengthen connections that may have been damaged in a stroke or other sort of situation. So I, I really want to go back and read that. It's very Absolutely. It's and very another, another example that you just reminded me of um, with the cognitive reserve um, that I've used is it's like a powerful car that can enable you um, to change gears or accelerate. You're still going, getting to the same place, um, but you're using a different path to get there. And that's what you're doing is, or a different, um, a different gear to get there. So you're just kind of changing that process, um, but you're still going to have that same end result. Um, if, for example, one of the gears is not effective um, for where you're going. So um, these are the 10 main principles of neuroplasticity. Um, one of the most basic to understand is use it or lose it. You know, our, if we don't continue to stimulate our mind and use, um, you know, our different abilities, we will lose the ability to function in that um, manner. Um, so keeping yourself actively engaged is going to have a tremendous impact. Um, and then of course, use it and improve it. So this is, can apply to anyone um, that kind of, um, refers to that cognitive reserve. You know, the more um, we do things, and a great example for um, home care assistance within home care assistance is um, we get more challenging as we go through the activities. So the more we see an improvement in the response, that means that, and that's going to go down, <clears throat> excuse me, um, with intensity as well. Um, but the more challenging and the more um, repetition that we use when talking about neuroplasticity, the better the results. Um, it's really important that it's specific to that person. So, you know, truly tailored to the individual, um, it's engaging, it's fun, you know, so that they're gonna have more of a, um, you know, the more willing to engage in it you know, after a long time and stick with it. Um, you know, time matters. And this is more so in response to a brain injury or a stroke. The sooner um, after these life-changing events occur, the better um, results that studies have shown you have. Um, age is also a factor. So the sooner, the better, um, you know, building up that cognitive reserve and, and strengthening that brain. Um, and transference and interference, um, it can be delayed depending on what you have. Not everyone's going to look the same in their, um, in their recovery, but that doesn't mean you don't continue with it and you keep going through and, and you will, um, you know, see improvement. And then transference is if you focus on, um, if you practice in one area of the brain, it's actually gonna have an impact on the surrounding areas of the brain. Um, so it will transfer over um, to, to those different lobes. And we have a great visual that we'll pull up um, shortly that kind of breaks it down and shows um, the functions and what lobes are responsible for what in our life. Anything else? 
Okay. There's so much. I know. So um, I thought this was a great visual to just show, you know, how important it is to do different things that are going to um, target all these different areas. Okay. Right. So it's not a one type thing, you know, doing crossword puzzles that are challenging, you know, may be great for the frontal lobe, but we got to do something different in order to, um, you know, impact our vision or our occipital lobe or our um, balance. So we want to make sure that, you know, we try and, and take a very holistic approach to the things that we do. Um, so we're focusing on all these different domains or lobes. Um, and again, having, you know, the healthiest and, and most fit brain possible. So this breaks down the sub domains. Um, and these are all things that are going to impact our brain health and impact our quality of life. Um, so you'll see on the left um, ways that we cope with stress, and we'll get into that in a bit. Um, socialization, especially now, is so important. Um, especially with our, within our senior communities. Um, so doing things to try and maintain that and avoid isolation. Um, some of the fun things that we're gonna do, uh, whether it's exercise or um, activities, crafts that bring us you know, joy, um, sensory music is very powerful. Um, and we'll get into that in just a bit. And then of course the diet, um, as I mentioned, and we'll get into a few food groups that um, or superfoods, as we call them, that um, have known to have a great impact on um, our heart health and our brain health. And then you'll see here, as we go through some of these um, therapies, some of these um, you know, different modalities, um, we'll reference back to these subdomains of the brain specifically. Um, so your memory, your executive functioning, um, your attention, your language, and then your visual spatial perception, which is so important, um, especially with the senior community, senior population, because um, we all know falls um, and, you know, balance issues um, can be very detrimental. Um, so any way to strengthen that um, is going to help alleviate any fall, you know, risks for falls and things of that nature. Anything you want to add? Uh, I mean, we, we like to use the, the light switch analogy a lot to sort of communicate this um, in a less technical way. You know, each of these subdomains, in a sense, if they had their own switch, you know, through isolation or through any sort of injury, um, you know, some of those domains can be switched off, you know, and so treating the brain like an electrical circuit, because we do know that electricity is running through you know, all the different lobes, you know, we can restore functioning by, you know, consistently activating those different domains in a circuit training kind of fashion to where we're doing graduate, a series of graduated exercises uh, to work with each domain in a holistic way, you know, over time. Um, so you can have someone that lost either the ability or the passion to play an instrument or to read, um, and then we can help restore that. Um, obviously the, the percentage is gonna differ uh, according to the context, um, but yeah, it gets very interesting. Um, and we can continue because I don't want to- that's, that's, a, that's a great example though, and I've seen it, many times, um, whether it's someone who used to love to paint and now, you know, they have a hard time, you know, seeing or, you know, making that visual spatial connection when um, taking the brush to the paper. Um, so there's ways we can get around that. Maybe they don't, they're not going to paint that detailed, um, you know, visual or, or landscape, um, but what can we do? You know, we can maybe do watercolors and kind of adjust it, maybe blow it up on a canvas um, so they're still able to see and, and have that feeling and, um, and, and enjoy one of the things that brings them excitement and passion. So it's adjusting to that ability um, again, and that's gonna definitely tie into the non-cognitive subdomains. So as I had mentioned um, on the principles of neuroplasticity, and this is just a great um, manual that has, is referenced quite a bit, uh, but the most important thing when we're talking about the cognitive um, is make sure you know, it's relevant and engaging, it's fun, it's, it's tailored to that person. Um, you wanna be specific and you know, really understand what areas you're targeting and why. Um, repetition is very, very important. Um, you know, and, as things get easier and you do things over and over again, and we have one example I'll show um, in just a moment, um, you want to keep it 
challenging. So you want to have different levels. So for example, with um, the program at home care assistance, there is progressive. So for example, Stroop, and that's what we're going to show next, starts out very easy, but there's several levels. So as you master one, you're going to move on to the next. Um, because if it's not challenging, and it doesn't require, you know, thought, and it comes too easy, it's not going to have that impact. So here's an example of Stroop. So this is something where um, it'll get harder as you go through it. So for example, where the color and where they're positioned is very strategic because your eyes tend to move forward. So you're looking ahead. So for example, um, I see blue here. You, you may want to say blue, um, but and normally when we're in person and we're doing this, we'll have a volunteer, um, I guess because we're virtual, we won't today, um, but this activity is to say the color of the text, not the word, um, and we do it in the office quite a bit just for fun, um, and it's, it's very hard as you get to those higher levels because you really have to stop and think. Um, and this is going to have a, a ton of impact on um, your memory, um, language, and um, attention. I, I believe it is, is, it's a big one for Stroop as well. We'll do a little quick activity. Um, and this is for our language domain. Um, I want everyone to unscramble the words. And here's an example of um, an easier one and then one that's a little more challenging. And what you need to do with this is figure out, unscramble and then figure out which word does not belong in the category. Be sure to type your answers about which word does not belong in the category. Right, so under colors, light doesn't belong. Mm -hmm. Someone else has listed the colors. Red, bulb, but it's, I think it's blue. Uh, green, light, black. And then they say bulb doesn't belong, but the bulb is really blue. So the light is the one that doesn't belong, I believe. And see, that's our, our eyes way of tricking us, you know, to really think because I could see where you would get bold because, you know, quick glance at the letters. Um, excellent. So that is correct. Light does not belong. Um, and then technology, any one know which one doesn't belong? So someone says mirror. Mirror, correct. So television, computer, refrigerator, um and that was tele telephone sorry television computer refrigerator and telephone correct um music is one of the most powerful um therapies that we can implement because it targets so many different areas of the brain. And it's actually the last thing to go um, as we lose our memory. Uh, music is, is the last thing. Um, and so because it taps into all these different areas of the brain, um, it is so powerful. Um, and it's not just, you don't have to sing, even just listening is going to activate um, and start to stimulate that pre and post motor function. Um, so having music and, and calming music or, you know, music that the person enjoys um, is, is a great way to um, to make to, you know, kind of have a, a widespread approach um, and target those different domains, as you see here. Anything you want to add with the, the music? Uh, when we combine the music therapy or um, music programming with the cognitive therapy programs, we really start seeing the expansion of the way the domains play out in a given person's personality. Um, so it's almost like each domain has its own sort of mini personality. And so you'll notice, uh, especially with the music, you'll start getting different memory clusters, uh, different sort of groupings of experience, uh, like the memories of that experience will come out. And so, you know, 
Earlier, we kind of talked about the, the purpose of anchoring our awareness and, and how we can use positive neuroplasticity um, to create positive changes. The same applies to when you have a certified professional working with someone in a setting like this where you know the, the certified professional can then interact with these different many personalities, almost like an improv sort of way and really start bringing out certain details to bring a therapeutic aspect to all this. So it's not just clinical or it's not just fun little games that we're doing together, but it can be a holistic th sort of therapeutic process. Um, and so it's just very interesting to be involved in that and to see it play out um, in, in our individuals' lives that we work with. Absolutely. But music definitely is that final sort of component that really brings that out. And, and to add to that point, you know, you'll see like dancing, um, there's ways that you can combine, you know, the physical, getting that heart rate up um, and truly making it, um, you know, a, um, a very wide um, benefit. So basically, um, you know, some of the ways that you'll see it used in therapies is as I mentioned, singing, dancing, um, instruments, coordination, um, with regards to um, improving gait or motor movement, motor movements. Um, and some of the benefits with this is, um, you know, impacts your executive functioning, um, your attention, your verbal, your memory. Um, so as Chad had mentioned, you know, it is so holistic and it is has such an impact, um, you know, if, if applied to to that therapeutic. Um, and, and as I mentioned earlier, just listening is an, even in itself is gonna activate some of those um, motor pathways. So adding movement um, is truly gonna have a great benefit. As I had mentioned, um, when we were talking about brain 101, um, every time your heart beats, 25% of that blood goes to the brain, right? So, <laughs> Doing aerobic exercise, and this is tailored to the individual um, because you know my abilities and someone else's. Um, you know, there's a lot of pressure to do certain things, but I always say start slow and work your way up, and you know find your um, your pace. Uh, but anything that you know gets your heart going, opens your lungs, causes them to work harder, um, is going to have an impact on the brain, um, and some of the considerations and, and research has shown that it helps eliminate or reduce depression. Um, you're more um, willing or interested to socialize. Um, it's gonna improve your emotional function. Um, and then some of those domains we had mentioned earlier that it's gonna have a positive impact on your attention, um, your executive functioning, your memory, visual perceptive language. So that's another thing. So you add that aerobic exercise and music and you're truly targeting um, you know, all those domains we talked about. Anything you wanna add? Not yet. Yeah. And, and as I mentioned, start small. So sometimes, you know, maybe it's just doing chair exercises. Maybe it's just walking. Um, I know for me, I try so hard not to be this person, but it's not always easy where I will circle the parking lot, you know, waiting for a close spot, especially when it's the, you know, peak of summer here in Texas and or take the elevator versus taking the stairs. And when, if we start implementing these smaller things, um, it's gonna help us get closer um, you know, to our goal. Um, and that's another thing that I think is really important is um, setting both short and long-term goals um, you know, for things that you wanna achieve and, and different therapies, again, that you wanna uh, implement into your, your daily lifestyle. This was from a study um, and very, very clinical. So I just wanted to include, um, you know, just a, a clip from it. Um, but there are studies that indicate that exercise can improve learning and memory, um, especially with people with Alzheimer's disease. Um, and it's by altering the structure and the function. So both are structural and functional um, abilities in those different areas of the brain. Um, so just to keep it very basic, um, you know, it helps maintain and it helps to enhance um, the brain's performance and functionality. And there's, there are several studies um, published on, on these concepts now. So the next thing that 
I think is very, very important um, when talking about neuroplasticity and brain health is, especially today is, is stress management, you know, and it's not one size fits all. So the way I handle my stress and what's going on in my life versus Chad is going to look and sound very different. So truly trying to figure out, you know, what is causing our stress um, or what is the most, you know, because there's a lot to be stressed about, I'm sure. Um, but what is that main, you know, source of stress? And then how we can control how we respond to that. And we'll do this and we'll talk about this in the next few slides um, by talking about some healthy ways to cope with the stress. And a lot of this we already know, uh, but I think it's important to just kind of remind, and I, I'm a visual person on, you know, some of these things that maybe we forget in the chaos and the busyness of our life, um, but that we should slowly start to, you know, integrate into our, our day to day. Um, if they're, if possible, unfortunately, we can't always remove some of the major stressors in our life. Um, but if possible, you know, take a look at what we can eliminate. Um, and then, as I mentioned with the physical, um, you know, set realistic goals and expectations. You know, I'm going to do, you know, one hour of self-care per day or per week, or I'm going to make sure that, you know, I go for a walk in the park with my dog, you know, four days a week. So, kind of get a break from, you know, the work environment. Um, so kind of break it down and really hold yourself accountable to, to those short and long-term goals. Okay. Um, and so as we talk about coping skills, I'd like to break it down into three, these three different buckets. So we can do it by the physical. So the, by exercise, or by stretching, practicing some breathing, meditation. Um, that kind of goes into the, the uh, mental as well, but um, the things that we eat and sleep. Sleep is so important um, for our brain. It needs time to shut off and, and refresh. Um, and that's one of the things that I think a lot of us don't do. Your brain's always going all day long, multitasking, doing a million things. Um, and then, you know, either we're getting short sleep or maybe we're not getting as, as quality of sleep uh, that we should. So what can we do to ensure, um, you know, our sleep hygiene is, is where it should be. And then some of the problem solving, some of those brain games. And I have a great um, website that we came across um, that I'm going to share in a moment that has some great challenges on there. So if you ever, you know, have a moment and you want to just go there and pull up, um, you know, a brain teaser um, just to kind of throw it in here and there as you have time, a uh, great resource. And then those things that are going to give us meaning and um, sense of purpose, right? So having that support, socialization, doing things we enjoy. Like for me, I love to volunteer with the Alzheimer's Association and I also love to uh, volunteer with Animal Rescue. Um, and I used to feel so guilty for doing it because I had so many other responsibilities. But especially now I have told myself that this is something I'm doing that brings me joy. Um, it, it's helping and giving back within my community and it's totally fine. Um, so things, you know, it's okay to do some things that, you know, maybe aren't work related or, you know, maintaining the home or anything, but that bring you joy, um, you know, each week or month or however often you're able. I think there's a very interesting parallel to what you just said and how we see it play out um, and our patients where we're working with the different domains in our cognitive therapy. Um, one thing that the brain does, it's an, a very amazing ability. Um, if it notices that it's losing functioning in a given domain and it, that domain includes something you're passionate about, let's say it's painting or artistic expression. Um, if you start having any damage in that area of the brain where you know, you're losing that functioning, eventually it's gonna shut itself off. And the basic way that it does that, the way we communicate it, is that it does that to prevent you the stress of being upset that you can no longer, you know, express yourself artistically, you know? And so in a sense, it just takes away the sort of, the conscious awareness of the passion that was there beforehand. Um, and so, you know, when we start working with the domains, we're restoring that sort of, we're restoring that electrical current back through it to, to activate it again, going back to that light switch 
uh, sort of analogy. Um, and that's why you'll see such drastic results where, you know, someone played the piano or they were a teacher mm -hmm. of music and they lost interest after a stroke, but after being in a cognitive therapy program, you know, like we offer, or like Oxford offers, you know, they get that passion back and all of a sudden they're back full speed wanting to play music again. Or someone who's become nonverbal, you know, becomes like a Shakespeare that just wants to be verbose in every context, you know. And so it's just amazing how the brain can even, when it's trying to heal itself, you know, can shut off these different areas simply because it brings us conscious sort of suffering and it wants to prevent that, you know. But going back to our ability to use our awareness to facilitate the sort of the positive neuroplasticity process, um, it's just amazing how we can, we can cooperate with our mind to create these results or how we as professionals can go in and help someone else uh, in, a, in a cognitive therapy uh, context. And it's just amazing, really, the power of the brain. So I'm glad you went over that earlier as well. Absolutely, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. oh, keep doing that. Um, these are a few apps that um, I've come across that are great, um, free to, maybe sometimes we need the reminder or you know we need to, have a way to track it or things like that, um, different tools that we can utilize. Um, so I just wanted to share these and, and say, you know, there's so many resources out there now. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, knowing where to find them and what's out there um, and then determining, you know, what's gonna have the best impact for you personally based on your situation and what's gonna, um, you know, kind of resonate most um, with, your goals and, and your expect your short and learn long term goals. Thank you. No headspace is a great app. Mm -hmm. So as I had mentioned earlier, you know, I, I used to feel guilty. Um, about you know taking time to do the things that I wanted to do, and that doesn't mean volunteering. That can mean you know going and and keep in context, it's, it's, this is more pre COVID, um, you know, to the nail salon or going for a massage or going to play a round of golf. You know, it's, it is okay to do something for yourself. I know, especially when you have families, children, um, caring for loved ones, parents, um, we, we tend to truly focus all of our time and energy on, on those we love. Uh, but it's so important to take care of yourself um, and be the best and the strongest you can be because that's gonna have a direct impact on them as well. So, you know, breaking this down into two different areas, um, there's things that, you know, we can do for, um, physically do, um, like getting out, getting good sleep, um, making sure, you know, we're eating well, maybe doing a little meal prep if we don't have time during the day instead of, you know, busy, busy schedules and tendency to go through drive throughs and things like that. Um, and then we get into that, um, the, the mental component of it. So doing things like um, decompressing, if you're feeling really tense and stressed, just even a, a short one to five minute breathing exercise. Um, knowing yourself, this is important, um, you know, to know your limits and know when to slow down. Cause I know a lot of us, um, you know, we just go, 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 go. Um, and we're so used to being in that, um, you know, that daily lifestyle um, and you feel guilty slowing down. Again, going back to, um, you know, want th that goal of, being productive um, and getting things done, knocking things off our list. You know, I love the feeling, yes, of having a to-do list and crossing things off. Um, but there also needs to be kind of a balance and where you can step away and say, okay, let me just give myself 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. Um, and it, and you'll see as you start to do that and give yourself these, these little um, time periods that it is gonna have um, a very positive impact on your mood, um, you know, on your stress level, on your sleep, your ability to sleep. And then of course, how much you love yourself, um, which is very important too. Just your overall ability to be present, mm -hmm. you know. That way you're not dismissing people around you, like your loved ones or, you know, all of that. We get so caught up in the hustle and bustle that 
you know, even being aware of our own sort of well-being becomes something that is just dismissed. So just presence of mind. Absolutely. Is very important. Um, and then, you know, multitasking. I know for me, if I'm not multitasking, I feel like I'm not being productive. Um, but it, it is so important to, for your brain, because think about your brain, you know, constantly going in a million directions all the time. Um, are you going to have the same result as if your, your brain was solely focused on one thing at a time? Um, most likely not. So truly, you know, be engaged, like Chad said, be in that moment with what you're doing. Cause I know, you know, I'm guilty of it. I may be, you know, doing the dishes, but I'm thinking of, oh, I have to do that report. I have to switch the laundry. I, I wanted to mop the floors. I got to run to the pharmacy, you know, pick the kids up from, from class. So, um, you know, try in that moment just to focus on what you're doing um, and the rest, you know, make a list in case you're afraid you're going to forget like me. Um, but, but put that aside while you're, you're doing that one thing. Um, it's easier said than done. I know. Anything else? That's where breathing techniques come in. Yeah. You gotta that practice that. That helps get you out of mm -hmm. identifying with the mental chatter. Yep. So um, these are some of the things that, you know, we can do for our mind and our body. It's kind of just a different way of looking at the, the previous slide, um, but it's a little easier to kind of digest. So, you know, think about the things that make you feel good, um, whether you want to keep a list. For me, I love, I'm a visual. I think I mentioned this earlier. So I love having a vision board, um, things that I enjoy, pictures of, you know, mountains and hiking and the, the ocean and um, animals and the people I love and, you know, things that I'll look at and instantly kind of bring me a sense of joy and, and happiness. Um, unplug, as we said, you know, take the time to shut it off for a minute, even if it's only for five minutes, you know, throughout the day, find five minutes and just Focus on your breathing and just and turn your mind off. Um, declutter is a big one. I know for me, um, you know, what's that saying? Cluttered space, cluttered brain. Um, you know, the more you can stay organized and keep things, you know, simple and neat um, is going to be less distracting. Um, so, and for me, it's very therapeutic to be outdoors um, and it's okay to be selfish. Um, the other thing that I think, especially with the younger generation, um, with everything on social media and how it's become such a, a large part of our lives, um, to trying to remove some of the people or things and kind of what we utilize it for. So for example, I am I'm a huge dog person and I used to follow, you, follow several rescue groups, but I would see these animals come in in terrible condition and it would make me sick to my stomach and I every time and I'd end up crying and heart my heart would break and I'm like I need to change this so that when I lot if I do have to go on I want to see positive things so instead of following the rescues and the the pit bull stories um, I follow positive pages and um Things that as I go through my news feed, I'll have insp that'll inspire me, that'll, um, you know, cause a, a happiness versus a, a gut feeling, um, that negative gut feeling. So I think that's important too, um, is limit and kind of focus on what we do expose ourselves through with regards to social media. And then again, those, um, the deep breathing, the, the few, food is nutrition for our bodies. Um, so the more, um, the healthier our meals are, the more nutrition you're going to get in that body, and it's indirectly going to impact, again, that heart and that brain. Um, laugh. There's one of my favorite quotes is, um, you don't get old, you don't get old because you stop laughing. I mean, you don't stop laughing when you get old. You get old because you stop laughing. Um, and I should probably write that one down. But it's so important, you know, to, to laugh, to have fun. Um, you know, for me, when I'm stressed and I have a million things to do, I'm in the serious mode. And, you know, a sister or a friend, you know, will crack a joke and I'm just so focused that, I, you know, I just don't even appreciate it or try and, you know, say something to make me laugh. 
And, you know, I was really thinking about it and it's like, maybe that's the little break I need, um, you know, to kind of shut off for a second. Um, I love aromatherapy. To me, it's very, um, it's very beneficial, um, especially in the evening um, with relaxation. So if that's something that you're interested in, it can be very soothing, uh, both for the mind and the body. Um, anything else you want to add with these? Uh, aromatherapy. I mean, uh, I come from a, a large hospice background. And one of the things you learn about is the sort of the senses and, and how they sort of go away. You know, touch and smell are one of the last ones to go away. And that's because it's hardwired from the very beginning. So aromatherapy kind of takes you back, you know, just kind of go, takes you back to your core, you know, so to speak, especially when you find the right essential oils or the right scents to use. Um, it really can just take you out of a lot of the, the grimy, just sort of mental clutter and, and negative emotions that we kind of carry around. Um, it's just a short circuit to, to, to calmness and harmony, basically. So yeah, cool. Sense of smell. Good point. So here's that visual I was talking about. Um, so listen to a really fun song, um, talk to a friend or a pet. I, I find myself talking more and more um, to my, my dogs. Uh, you can, you can binge, you know, we talk about healthy eating, um, but if, you know, if that's, you know, something you enjoy, I'm from an Italian family and, and we love some food that's really not right for us. Um, doesn't mean you can't splurge. Um, you know, and, and again, one, oh, another one that I love on here, and I actually um, saw a speech on this, is when you wake up in the morning, it's a great thing to make your bed, fresh sheets. This way, when you go to sleep at night, um, you know, you're getting into that clean, neat bed, and it, it tends, their studies have shown that it helps with relaxation and getting um, yourself to a place where you're um, comfortable to, to go to sleep. Um, tub you know taking it I, I'm always rushed I don't know about you I don't know if you take a lot of baths and have time to um I'm always in a rush but you know taking that time to unwind maybe throw some aromatherapy some essential oils in the tub some music um and, and shut that brain off can be uh, beneficial in many ways um so just some ideas on on self-care um anything you want to yeah it's pretty good we do a lot of this, I think, these days, you know, look up the funny memes and laugh a bit. Um, so I wanted to add, this is that website that I was referencing. It's called, um, it's www.sharpbrains.com. Um, and they have tons of great uh, brain teasers on there. And some of them are really hard. So if anyone has a moment now and they want to, let's see, I'm not sure how we are on time. Um, but if you want to try one of these, um, especially, this is an easy one, say the months of the year in alphabetical order, um, say that in your mind, you're, you're going to realize you have to really think about it um, and say them all out loud and kind of organize it in your mind. Um, and that's why something like this versus just reading, you know, January, February, March, April, May, such a difference um, in the impact that it has on your brain. And that's a great example of, um, you know, progression of, of the, child, the, the level of difficulty um, in the things we're doing. So maybe you start with this, but then the next time you do it, do it backwards. Next time, do it in alphabetical order. And then the next time, do it in reverse alphabetical order. Um, so, you know, you're constantly having to, to tap into those different domains and, and challenge yourself. Um, anything you want to add on this one? No, I mean, I, I was just thinking about how I would love to be able to do it in French, Hebrew, and Mandarin. Yeah. So if anybody out there can help me with that, that would be great. I would love to be able to say I can do that. And that's something that's amazing um, because I, for example, my grandmother spoke Italian as a child, but they stopped speaking. They only spoke English in the home growing up. And then when she raised her children, my mother and her siblings, and I didn't even know she ever spoke Italian. And after... I'd say about 12 years into a diagnosis of Alzheimer's when she, you know, truly um, could not function, she would start to say words in Italian. And it was amazing to me um, that, you know, it's still there. Um, and can she speak and, and have the, the language and have the dialogue that she could back then and understand? 
Probably not because, you know, as we had said earlier, use it or lose it. Um, you're not going to have that same ability as if you were practicing it every day and, you know, kind of thrown into um, utilizing the language in your day to day. Um, but, you know, you can still, again, go back and strengthen um, those domains, that language domain and get back to where you once were, um, if not you know, further. So it's great for anyone that's looking for, um, you know, some sort of a, a mental challenge, um, pick up a language. There's some great apps out there that are free or very inexpensive. Um, and that's a great, a great way um, to enhance that function of the brain. And Kathleen, I think probably have like another 10 minutes or so and then have for questions because I want to make sure we we, no, have we, time. we have about another three minutes okay <laughs> so just kind of an overview um you know and again we can we can cheat um it's not to say that we're going to completely deprive ourselves uh, but based on I'm going to go through a couple oops, some of these slides here, um, some of these superfoods um, are shown to have tremendous impact um, based on, even on studies. Um, blueberries are one of the most powerful um, and actually have been shown in, at, um, not in humans, but in animals um, to eating blueberries every day actually grew um, and strengthened regions of the brain. Um, so that was something really interesting. So even if it's, you know, just grab a handful or throw them in a salad, um, try and get blueberries into your, um, your daily uh, diet. Diet. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Um, dark leafy greens. These are really important. Um, spinach, kale, um, these have such powerful nutrients, vitamins, um, the antioxidants that are gonna help protect those brain cells. Um, and again, based on studies, um, can actually help preserve uh, cognitive function and, and our mental sharpness as we do get older. Um, so if you don't, you know, and, and some of the ways I'll mask this, you know, or for some of the kids that maybe don't love vegetables. Uh, when I make a smoothie, I'll throw in a handful of spinach or kale and you do not taste it. Um, and, and I have proven that um, by tricking and then, you know, advise that it was in there. And, oh, really? So um, you can disguise it if you're not a big fan of vegetables, uh, but it's so important to, you know, get those from foods that we eat. Uh, another one is omega-3. Um, you know, from plants or animals, um, so seeds, walnuts, um, fish, salmon, um, and of course, you know, keep in mind, you definitely want to talk to your doctor, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, any ch major changes that you're making um, in any aspect with, you know, vitamins and, and food, um, you know, is, is just reviewed by someone that understands any health issues or medications that may potentially, um, you know, have an interaction. Um, and and omega threes are so important because um, they're not only going to help support your brain health, but you know, cardiovascular and that mood regulation. Um, so if you can, um, I don't eat fish. I just don't like it. So for me, it look, it's a lot of. Um, chia seeds, flax seeds, walnuts, almonds, um, things like that to get, you know, those omega-3s. Yeah, krill oil, uh, fish oil, and other sort of amino acids like L-theanine. You know, there's lots of really good research about, you know, amino acids in, in our brain health, um, in our nerves in general. So a lot of good things to look at for sure. And that's it. Um, so I wanted to see if anyone had any questions and if there's anything you wanted to add. Oh, why don't we do, why don't we wrap it up with a fun um, riddle? You wanna do it? Sure. All right, so a fun riddle. You throw away the outside and cook the inside. Then you eat the outside and throw away the inside. What did you eat? I do, I used to use this one a lot um, in my, my weekly mind fitness classes and it's so 
funny to see the initial reaction because my attendees would get so mad at me and so frustrated and they'd be like what are you here to make me feel dumber and then once they get one or two and they start to kind of change the way they're thinking and and tap into those different domains they and they tend to get them all right and it's just amazing to see you know that initial reaction and then you know how we can within the same session even kind of adjust our, our thought process um, to get that answer uh, apple is not the answer but that's a good guess um do we have any other guesses and you can repeat it so you throw away the outside, take the outside, you throw it away. Then you cook it. Then once it's finished cooking, you eat the outside and then you throw away the inside. What's left? What'd you eat? Cindy Powell got it right. She said corn. Oh, right. she's she's been to my presentations <laughs> before. That's not fair. <laughs> okay, what can you catch but not throw? Yes, correct. Um, so that's just a few examples and they get harder and hard disease. Yep. Um, we'll do one more. Um, this one's hard. Want to do that one? Sure. Or this one. Yeah, that's, that one's fun. From the beginning of eternity to the end of time and space to the beginning of every end and the end of every place, what am I? Can I take it to a mystical place? See, this is supposed to be about science. Oh, science. Yes. From the beginning of eternity to the end of time and space. Visualize. To the beginning of every end and the end of every place. What am I? Just to get my body. We have people suggesting <laughs> like your time, opportunity, one more time. Oh, yeah, All right, do one more time. From the beginning of eternity to the end of time and space, to the beginning of every end and the end of every place, what am I? Yay! Wow! I am very impressed, Laura. Very good. Um, it, so the answer is the letter E. That, so from the beginning of eternity, to the end of time, the letter E, um, and space. So, yeah. So, and, and again, as you do more and more of these, and as, you know, we go through the sessions, it's amazing how much easier it becomes because you're not using that same train of thought in your, your day to day. Um, and it's making you think outside the box. So. Um, the answer would have been E from E awesome. MC squared. We, we have a couple of questions and comments from the presentation that I want to make sure we have time for. Okay, sure. The first one is from Carol. Regarding the use of music in Alzheimer's patients, I've heard that the music needs to be from that person's past, which they connected with, and not necessarily the music the caregiver or therapist would choose. Absolutely. So it is so important, and this is can be a little more difficult, but... Um, find out where they are in their journey. So for example, when I was working with a client and in his mind, it was when he was in the war, um, before he got married, that's the, the time frame that he was. So his kids would always play the music that they grew up with, with him. And he wouldn't, he would get agitated. He would be, you know, combative. What is this? It's, it's because it was a little more upbeat. It was a little, um, you know, more fun than, you know, with the kids. And we, we said, you know, we got to get to, we got to know him. And based on the things he was saying, um, we determined that's where he was in his life. Um, and we started to play music from that time. And it was night and day. Um, so absolutely. Um, next comment. What do you all think of lifestyle medicine as a board certification? Like, 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 Functional medicine or integrative? Lifestyle medicine. I don't know 100% what that means, but I'm assuming uh, it has to do with like self-care, diet, different things like that. So personally, I, I'm big on that because I was um, extremely sick and bedridden um, with autoimmune and was put on all the steroid, this and that. 
and I met a naturopath um, in New York City. But I used to live there. Um, and he had me cut out gluten and dairy and, and I have zero, um, zero symptoms. So I don't know if that's what you're asking. It's hard. I'm Italian and we live off cheese and bread. Um, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, but it, it, it changed my life. So. Awesome. All right. It looks like um, one more question and it has to do with the websites you mentioned. So Lana, we'll be posting the recording of today's event along with some additional information that Jennifer and Chad shared with us. And they will go ahead and they'll send me those links to those websites so that we can include that when we post the recording for you all. And you'll get a link to view the recording when you get your CEU certificates. So with that, I would really like to thank Jennifer and Chad for participating and doing such a great job with today's presentation. Um, so thank you both. Um, I want to make sure that you all know that Seniors Blue Book is the only comprehensive caregiving resource guide in the Dallas area. We also have our discharge planners resource notebook. So make sure that if you are wanting those, um, that you send me an email and let me know that you want those and we can mail them to you or send you the digital links online. Um, again, a reminder to complete the evaluation for today. And I did It'll pop up on your screen at the end of today's event. It is actually, the link is in the chat. You can copy and paste it into the um, into your browser. It will come with an email to you tomorrow. And if you still don't get it, um, then please send me an email and I will send it to you. If it's not done by the end of the day tomorrow, you will not get continuing education credit for today's event. Um, I wanna really thank all of our hosts today, the Oxford Grand and Laura Black for um, helping to coordinate today's event. Home Care Assistance of McKinney, Dallas and the Park Cities for presenting at today's event. Seniors Blue Book um, and then SBB University and myself. So thank you all for being here. And I think that uh, Laura with Oxford Grand and then Matt, Chad and um, Jennifer will still be on for a few minutes. And so if someone does have a question or really wants to talk to them, if you will just raise your hand, I will try and activate you so that you can have a conversation with them. And then um, we're, we're essentially adjourned. So if people want to leave, please do. Um, and I just wanna make sure that we go through a few more comments that people put in here. Um, um, great job, Jennifer and Chad, I always love listening to you. Thank you for the presentation. And is the PowerPoint available?